All right, we're getting started here. <clears throat> People late. really are going to start to think that we're sponsored by Coke or Pepsi. Well, but I think we're, I like that we're keeping them guessing yeah. by switching back and forth. Well, the problem is there's only Pepsi machines downstairs. I, it is a problem. I'm a Coke guy. I'm a Coke To be honest girl. with everybody. Well, and of course, this is the new Pepsi water product. <laughs> it's really delicious. And I'm drinking out of an opaque canister, so you don't know oh. what's in there. It yeah. could be anything. It could be a Martini, but it's not. I'm a Coke guy, but the thing is, that's cherry Pepsi. I can deal with that, as long as it's got some other flavor. That's to like it. battery acid. Well, and there's, and there's Dr. Pepper downstairs too. I, I do like Dr. Yeah, Pepper. Yeah, I occasionally okay. dabble, that. dabble in the doctor. <laughs> so now hey, that we've gotten that out of the this way, this is Soda Cast with <laughs> Tim and Martha. <laughs> and but anyway, we were going to talk about DS106 today. We were going to talk so. about well, we talked about it a little bit last week, and right. we were going to talk again this week. So we got I got the final word yesterday that we will not be teaching digital storytelling this fall at the University of Mary Washington. Neither Jim nor I yeah. were given a section to teach. So uh, nobody was given a section. It wasn't just, just us that were denied. Um, so we're trying to decide you know, what we might do in lieu of a formal credit you know, granting class at the university. Yeah. Um, now there are two people in our network, Cheryl Colin and um, Michael Branson Smith. Right who are both teaching similar types of courses this fall. And I know Jim had talked at least with Michael last, two weeks ago or last week? I think it was last week, and Jim and Michael talked for a little bit, and I think they're both on, Jim's definitely on vacation, but I think Michael is as okay. well. Um, Cheryl's around, but I don't think she was able, she's not gonna be able to join us, I don't think, today, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so we'll talk about it. <laughs> but we're not running any course. We get to be participants this kind of time, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Well, that will be, and that's something I'm actually looking forward to. Yeah. Is kicking back and sort of experiencing this as right. opposed to being um, responsible for. <laughs> <laughs> it is a different. <laughs> um, but, but I guess Jim and Michael talked a little bit about a possible narrative. Yeah. That they could use to construct the semester in those different classes, and I think Cheryl's on board with playing a part in that to some degree as well. But I, like to be perfectly clear, like they're the ones who are actually teaching that this fall. Mm -hmm. So I want to leave like a lot of the decision, uh, all of the decision about what happens with, with if we do go with a narrative up to what oh. she, whatever Cheryl and Michael are, yeah. are comfortable with. But I think we can brainstorm some possibilities. And I know a bunch of people on Twitter the other night, we were talking about mm -hmm. this because um, we were talking about the possibility of the class not going forward. Well, there seems to be, two camps one who wants a full-on fictional narrative go crazy right goes some, similar to summer oblivion. oblivion to the next level that kind of thing and then the other side says eh, with everything going on in the world today whatever that argument means uh, maybe we shouldn't do something fictional maybe we should be doing something real a real narrative yeah. you know a documentary of what of some specific thing I had to um, I have to admit that when um, Tom Woodward um, suggested that maybe we shouldn't do an apocalyptic theme because of what's going on in the world today. I wanted to ask him if he knew something that I didn't know. What? But yeah, that was I mean, I think I know what he's talking about. Yeah, I, I think government's changing maybe is what, <laughs> but, what he's getting at. But that was a little alarming. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, and then, uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm thinking of the docu documentary idea, and, and it would it would kind of be cool to be able to once we get done with this have all the pieces for a documentary right you know have everything that's that's done within that um, you know whatever things are, are producing and actually kind of pl if you want to plan it out that much I don't know well, but to have something to, like that to show at the end to have yeah. a complete movie that everybody's con contributed to a lot of the assignments in uh, DS 106 a lot of the design and the video and the audio all of that sort of comes into play in a documentary. They yeah. all play pieces of in, in, in this digital storytelling. Well, and it, I think at one point this summer, Jim and I were talking about the Summer of Oblivion and that more than any other instance of digital storytelling until then, that five-week class really offered a tremendous amount of kind of media fodder that if we wanted to, we could put together a documentary about the summer of oblivion. Yeah. Well, that Jay would be really pretty fascinating. Yeah. Well, Jason just mentioned a documentary about digital storytelling. Right. Sort of that right. same yeah. idea, which is. And we're all about the meta, by the way. Yeah. So yeah. there's nothing too meta for us. Right. Yeah. Metas. Well, yeah. And then um, another um, thing that had come up is Todd Conaway had been. He's been talking about this for a while and had thrown together a Google Doc 
about the ideas, d different narrative ideas in a course, mm -hmm. and, and something he had suggested was to choose a fictional plot and to go into the course with a very rough idea of what that is, and then literally assign characters yeah. to the students, um, you know, to kind of map out an outline of who the characters in that story might be. Yeah. And then on the first day of class, they get assigned that character, and then throughout the course, their assignments are done um, as part of telling the larger story through the eyes and the voice of the char character who they've been assigned. It's hard because I feel like if you, you know, I don't want too many boundaries mm -hmm. in all of it, but mm -hmm. at the same time, yeah. if you just let people loose and say, do whatever you want, Summer of Oblivion was kind of that, at least yeah. for us here in the office. It was just sort of, what can we make up today? And I feel like, you know, right. a 13-week narrative of doing that at the end, I don't know that we're going to have anything of really great quality or substance. And so, On the other hand, it could go, go the other way. Yeah. Like, it could be that with 13 weeks, people are able to kind of wrap their heads around it more fully than, in, than I know for some people I think the five week you know um, incredibly heightened timeline scenario for that class made it difficult mm -hmm. to sort of like it was like just as you were kind of wrapping your head around where the story was it was off in like another direction right. and it made hard for students to kind of know where to contribute and how to contribute and with Todd's suggestion because you are kind of giving everybody this kind of voice this agency that's an assigned character right from the start, there isn't the opportunity to just be like, well, I don't know where I fit into this. Right, you that's, know? that's yeah. the key, I think, is that everybody's got to be on the same page in some respect right. so that it's not like, oh, this week I suddenly killed everybody. <laughs> and, you know, uh, <laughs> right. what, what did we do since then or that thing? But I do feel like, and I made this argument on Twitter last night, and I still kind of feel that people are a little bit more engaged when you are working with fiction, when you're mm -hmm. able to get creative um, in that aspect, whereas with something that's real, yes, the the end result can be great. A lot of documentaries are on mm -hmm. non-fictional things. Right. It makes sense that way. But at the same time, it's it's harder to get people excited about uh, doing a documentary about the stock market or doing right. a documentary about, um, you know, people living in Japan and the aftermath of the, you know, an earthquake or something like that. But if you do a fictional documentary of an event that never happened, an apocalyptic event or something mm -hmm. like that, I feel like that's really where the creative juices start flowing. So we're that. going for the mockumentary then? Maybe. Is that, is that Maybe it's more of a mockumentary. I don't, I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. But but I, I got a lot of lashback on that. A lot of people say There are a lot I'm, of people who feel strongly about having some kind of authentic, you know, non-fictional, um, like Tim was saying, he would like to see a central question or theme and then have different groups play out local or per personal mm -hmm. um, versions of that, interpretations mm -hmm. of that. Um, and I'd be curious to know, like, what kind of theme, like, he would have in mind. I'm having, right. I'm struggling with kind of coming up with what, like you said, what sort of theme you could choose that would be interesting and engaging. Well, one key and relevant. One thing that I think is really key to it is finding something that, no matter where people are, they can relate to it and be able right. to record video and audio and create content around that theme. It right. can't be something about Japan or something right. specific to New Zealand or even, you know, something in New York where Michael is or somewhere else because then, you know, that doesn't allow the distributed network to participate in the right. same way. So I think it needs to be broader in a sense, uh, but you can pull in aspects of that. Right. Um, Tom mentioned something uh and I'm trying to remember his exact phrasing, but it was something along the lines of uh, referring back to their localities and things like yeah. that. And it would be cool for me to be able to see like this end result, this documentary, where there's video footage and audio foot audio footage of all these different localities and this huge network coming together around a central theme. Right. You know. Now, and it's just a question of do you go with kind of a more general documentary style theme or do you pick some sort of fictional narrative around which people can build a story because right. again I don't know what the I don't I can't think of what that theme would necessarily be I mean maybe that's my f failure of my own vision but yeah. I'm I'm having trouble sort of imagining um, those professors asking if we saw or played urgent yeah I'm, trying to, I'm trying to go to that site and it's not well, you're coming on a, up you're on an a iPad. crash Is course flash? in changing the world <laughs> can you tell us more about that because it's not yeah, iPad friendly. And it's, well, what, what kind of one-word themes, Jason? I'm trying to think. 
Job you need one of those one word themes. Yeah. Like what kinds? Um, love. Maybe it's love. Maybe there's love so many people in, in the, the chat. Home, Home okay. purpose, yeah. amusement. Yeah. yeah. I saw some videos recently that were along the same lines. That I think one word was like motion or something, and they'd taken four different. Um, places around the world right and it, w it would be like someone walking along the street corners and they they cut it so that the video was constantly changing but the person in the middle was staying right. the same and moving around and drinking at a water fountain and the the background would constantly be changing to these four different countries another i don't know i'm just thinking about jason well whoever it was jason who made that suggestion about the one word theme it, what it made me think of is the way that we've been approaching the audio assignments yeah. in in DS 106 for the last couple sections where the students pick some kind of theme around which they then produce the right. show and we leave it really up to them how they want to interpret that theme whether they want it to be something like a fictional narrative whether they mm -hmm. want to do a kind of a documentary whether they want to do an interview style show but um, if you picked a theme and then tried to do something in the class that really revolved around group work yeah. Um, and having students work throughout the semester in those groups, you might even be able to leave it up to them. Like, yeah. do they want to interpret that theme within a fictional narrative? Do right. they want to do, spend the semester working on sort of documentary style um, pieces? Um, so that what you get then is sort of a, a collage of different yeah. interpretations of a theme told through a variety of different storytelling lenses, depending mm -hmm. on the student or the group's particular interest. And how they'd like to do that. So that's another. So it looks it, another possible. It, it, evoke looks kind of like a a, a graphic, graphic novel. novel. Dis, uh, it's, he dis, says it was a fictional narrative told in graphic novel form, with each chapter challenge serving as a focusing mechanism for interaction, assignments, etc. That's kind of cool. Game yeah. mecha mechanics, badges, quests. I see that. So, I can yeah. see that right here on my on my iPad. <laughs> that's good it's that you can up. see that. It's coming up. Andy. I thought nice I and sharp and. <laughs> Just in case you completely lost your vision, I, I thought I would read that for you. Tip my glasses down yeah, to, good. to see that. Very but good. So. Thank you for that noise, Professor. Yeah, the audio assignment, um, that's probably one of the few in DS-106 so far where it's involved group work. Yeah. I, I would say, right? We're, we're, well, um, we, we very frequently tell, like for projects, it's like you can work in groups, right. but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. So, like particularly with my summer class, I made that an option for some assignments, and um, and some of them chose to, but a lot of them chose to work singularly. Yeah. The radio show, because there was just such a burden. I mean, it was just so much. It's a lot of technological yeah. stuff. Yeah, that was the reason for approaching that more as a group work, at least in the spring. I'm interested um, to see how it's all going to work. I'm excited about it, but it's sort of you know. There are people who don't like working in groups, and then there are, there are facts of nature with it being this distributed network online mm -hmm. where that make it difficult in and sure. of itself. To yeah. you know, you think in online courses, if you require someone to do group work, well, what does that mean? We have to find a meeting space online somewhere and make it work for students. That's really difficult. It, us, yeah. us adults on Twitter and whatnot. We, we don't know. Is it, it really sometimes. that difficult? I just I just don't fully believe that they don't do other kinds of things yeah. online. You know, it's, I, I think it's one I of those mean, things that D Jeff, Jeff McClurkin talks about, where you know it's uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. You know, you make them look, a, make them feel a little uncomfortable. Get outside of their normal thing, and 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 they'll, I think, eventually pick it up. It, and I, I think, think it's for, unexpected more right. than anything for them. It's right. like, why would I have to do that for a class? Usually, you know, you hand me this sort of platform upon which we're going to do the group work. Like we're going to meet in, you know, class this many times, or. Mm -hmm. You know, but to tell them, look, the burden is on you. You have to work in a group. You have to figure out how to do that. You have to figure out what tools to use. Like, I realize that's hard, but, um, you know, it's kinda that's like kind of light. I mean, like, you, do in real life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, th there's a real good chance that when you're out there working in the real world, you'll be called upon to do something similar. Yeah, so why not model the, it now? In the front of the room that tells you <laughs> in a safe place, exactly yeah. what yeah. to do. So I didn't uh, start any timer, but my guess is that we're nearing somewhere around the 15-minute mark. Would that be roughly sure. correct? Sure. If, if we're done, we can that. probably finish up, but we can add any more final comments. Well, a, a few comments just related to DTLT today that I need to address are that we're not using Justin TV anymore. So people need to go to dtlttoday.com slash live. If they want to watch the live show, it seems like 4 p.m. Eastern seems to be the general time frame that we're broadcasting a little bit before then, a little bit after then. But for the most part, that's what it is. Um, and the other thing that I was going to do is a call for um, volunteers. We need people to 
uh, be interviewed to talk about stuff that's going on, uh, it, especially right now. It's summertime. Uh, the professors are just starting to get back, but we haven't really lured them in here to see what we're doing. Uh, and so we want to be able to talk to you all and see what you all are up to. And so we have content for this show. So if you're interested in doing that, get a hold of us. You know how on Twitter, um, on, you know, our various social networks and things. So dtlttoday.com slash live is the only place to see the live show at this point. So or, or if you're watching on an iPhone or an iPad, you can do dtlttoday.com slash iPhone, and that will stream as well. Now, the thing about that with that live stream is that there's like a 40, 45-second delay. It's not real, real time. So uh, if you were trying to follow along with the chat and stuff. But. And what, one other question. Are we going to do a live show tomorrow in our presentation? Because if that's true, then our live show it would is going to be a different earlier. time. And we don't know what that what that time is yet. Follow DTLT today on Twitter, and we'll let you know. Because <laughs> we're going to be, gonna be gonna talking to some new faculty tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to do your you're going to do um, the show. And we thought about and if, <laughs> and if we don't pull this off, we'll be on at our normal time, and you can tune in at, our, at your regular assigned right. time. But uh, we were thinking of of bringing the kit down there and and recording from there and and seeing if we could yeah. kind of bring in a live audience or whatever from, from that room. So. Yeah, if you're not yet following the DTLT Today Twitter account, you should, because I've been putting stuff out there all the time about uh, what's going on and what we're talking about, and especially when we're going live, because we're so, very unpredictable. So basically, you're going...